Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is CJ and I am back again to um, talk about this particular illustration that we are taking a look at. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be dissecting the process of making this particular illustration in this particular video, so it should be fun. Um, so uh, to start things off, I guess I could talk about what the illustration is all about and how it came about and yet yeah, and all that good stuff. So um, this is my particular entry for the character design challenge in uh, November of 2021. Uh, so this was done in fall of last year. Um, Again, it was for a contest um, for a group in Facebook um, slash the character design uh, quarterly magazine. Um, so yeah, they hold this contest every month and whatnot. And the theme for this particular month is veggie animals. Um, and for my particular vegetable based animal, I decided to do a broccoli slash whale. And <laughs> I could not come up with a more clever name than brocale like what <laughs> you know i mean i'm so sorry i'm just i guess i'm not uber creative in that particular department <laughs> so but yes i named my animal brocale for for um important to the word broccoli and whale because i decided to do that that's gonna be my vegetable animal broccoli whale so yeah, um, that's where that's what we're gonna be taking a look at, and that's my idea for this particular animal. Um, and so yeah, I guess right now we could just I could just talk real quick about um, the process. The process is slightly different this time around. Uh, typically, I do uh, an initial sketch at the very beginning, but this one, this time around, I am just straight up going gung ho and just doing my thing. <laughs> I, I'm not even um, doing a sketch. I basically what, I, what I'm doing is I'm just blocking out general shapes and basically I'm going to slowly refine these shapes that I blocked out. Uh, you can see that about three minutes has elapsed um, you know in regular time but this is obviously sped up and if I'm not wrong I think it's sped up five times. So I'm assuming that this would have been 15 to 20 minutes in at this point. And you can see that it's just really loose when I'm doing this. Everything is just really blocked out shapes and then slowly blending all the shapes in. Um, but the main gist is that I, I need for the image to be readable right away, which it's very, very readable right off the bat. You can see that uh, there's a gradation thing going on. At the, back, uh, at the bottom and then some form of really weird looking shapes on top uh, and then obviously the animal is very very obvious so, I, so the animal part is really obvious but the top part is not quite clear it's basically the waves that I'm working on on top um, and it's basically a shot of the waves from underneath so obviously it's just gonna look funky right now because it's still all super loose but I'm gonna slowly define this um, slowly over time um so yeah uh typically my process is i would do a sketch and then i would do this really weird uh coloring thing with my random mac brush which you know i set my random mac brush to hue variation so i'd get all this really weird color crazy variations but this time around i'm just basically going with the colors uh, that I'm picking on a color wheel because it's pretty straightforward. You know, it's predominantly going to be a blue based illustration with obviously a green animal in the center because, well, you know, it's broccoli, so it has to be green, right? Um, so really is just blue and green. And those are just pretty much the hues I'm working on. And so basically, I'm basically just going straight from color picking. Um, and I didn't start out with a palette or anything. I didn't start out with my limited palette that I normally have, um, which helps me out at the very beginning of any illustration. Um, so this is going to be unique because typically what I do is I would 
color my pieces with my hue very random egg rush uh, it would lay down really weird funky colors then i would typically smudge everything and then at the end of all of that i would have this base mate that i would work on you know where everything's kind of fuzzy everything's kind of messy but everything is readable i would know where all the shapes are i would know where the foreground is the background is and the midground i know the major characters and whatnot and then basically what i would do is at that point i would do like this three-step process that i do all the way throughout the pieces all, all throughout the piece which is the delineating my edges i make my edges sharper I accentuate the shadows and add highlights. Now that's my typical workflow. On this one, it's slightly varied. I still do that three-step process as soon as I get like a really good idea of what my base paint is. But for now, uh, my main thing is that I'm really knocking down the major shapes. The bottom part is done at this point in time, but the top part I know is still kind of fuzzy. And it's still kind of messy. The good thing though is that I'm using a lot of references when I'm doing this particular illustration. And so that helped a lot, basically. If I didn't have any of those references and I'm going off the top of my head, um, then that's the point where I would really need that good line sketch just to kind of guide me. Um, but since I have tons of good references when I was using this, um, when I, when I was painting this particular piece, it, it was just basically kind of a cakewalk. It's messy right now, but I wasn't too worried about it because I, I was looking at my reference sheet, basically, and so it was all good. Uh, I do want to give credit to Andrew Sutton. Um, he has a particular photo. Uh, I had a bunch of photos. I, I didn't just, you know depend on one particular photo for this particular illustration but i do want to credit understand because when i was doing my research um he has this photo of a blue whale that was really really cool because um it's not really a close-up or anything i mean it was taken um from afar it was a far shot right but it helped me realize a few details that would happen underwater that I don't really consciously think about. Um, one of the details that was on the photo that I noticed was the little streaks of light that happen because of the waves. I I'm not sure what the term for it is, or I don't even know if there's a particular term for it. But the best way for me to describe it is the bottom of your pool. You know, when you dive into your pool and you're looking down at the pool and you see these little streaks of light that's just kind of flow floating all around at the bottom of your pool that's basically caused by the caustics of the waves on top of your pool, it basically has the same effect on top of a whale, which kind of makes sense. I mean, duh, you know, it's a caustic effect uh, of water, of very transparent, semi-transparent object, right? And so um, I knew that caustic effects exist but you don't really consciously think about it you don't really think about doing streaks of light when you're painting you know it's just one of those technical things that doesn't really cross your mind and anderson's particular photo kind of helped me zone in on that and so i was really grateful for that there were other things there on, on my research too that was really cool that i didn't even really think about um like in particular for whales, I didn't realize that their eyes sit below their mouth. <laughs> I thought, you know, because you're so used to having the eyes on top of the mouth or above the mouth and practically almost all animals that you come across, that's the way it's typically set up. The eyes are above the mouth, but in blue whales, it's actually kind of reverse. <laughs> the eyes are underneath the mountain. I thought that was a very interesting little detail that I kind of added onto my whale. You can see that the eye on my whale is at the bottom. It kind of makes him look upside down, but as soon as I refine this, it kind of makes so much more sense. And then honestly, I mean, aside from those two things that I found out when I was doing my research, everything else I kind of pretty much had in my head to execute. Like one of the things that I was trying to execute in this particular illustration is atmospheric effects, especially underwater. Um, big animals like blue whales, Practically in all the photos that I've seen of them, you know, either, you know, if it's a photo taken from in front of the whale, you know, the front of the whale 
is very very clear but then the back of the whale is starts to get really fuzzy just because it's so far from the camera so this it has the same effect too when you're when people take photos of submarines and whatnot or anything underneath actually and so you can see me just do that just now i trying to execute this whole atmospheric effect on this tail where i would detail the tail and then kind of fuzz out the detail by going over it with blue again and i just kept doing that over and over and over throughout this illustration just to get that atmospheric effect so i already had that in mind on executing as well as the color dodge on top of his um, body like I really wanted that to be glowing since the whole image is predominantly blues and greens I obviously wanted to introduce a warmer tone of color in there just to kind of play contrast with everything that's going on in the illustration so that's basically um, that was basically in my head already for executing but it's for everything else that I discovered when I was doing my research, as is the eyes and the whole like streaks of light that I've completely forgotten, like duh, that happens, you know. I, I thought that was just really cool for me to run into that again and just think about, to think about that. So yeah. But right now I'm still very, very much obsessed with shapes. I'm like looking at a video right now and I realized at this point I should have been delineating my shapes, but I'm still not. I'm still really working on the shapes and just refining them over and over again. Um, and quite frankly, the top is still a mess. Um, but again, like I said, I had tons of good references for it, so it was just easy for me to just um, refine it later on. So, But anyways, I'm going to be messing with the shapes again, like I mentioned, and I'm probably going to go back some more. Uh, back and forth some more with the tail doing the whole atmospheric effect so that's probably what's going to happen in the next few minutes um, with me just refining the shapes um, and whatnot uh, so let's just go ahead and just watch the videos the video for now and watch me do this and then i'll just come back a little later on uh, once i start actually doing the detailing process
so for the past few minutes uh, that we've been quietly watching the video it was very very interesting for me to be re-watching this process again um, again like I mentioned this particular style of illustration that I I do I, I don't do as often anymore there was a phase in time or I went through a phase where I was basically starting out with blocks of shapes and just constantly refining it uh, but then I went back to doing my line sketch just because I love my line sketch uh, it gives me a little bit more of a structure rather than just <clears throat> excuse me sorry and then just doing blocks of shapes but it's always fun to start out that way though because it always feels so much more experimental to me uh, even if even though I was using tons of references for this particular illustration and I feel uber prepared uh, before starting this piece a lot of the things that I executed in the piece is still very very experimental and I thought that was just really really cool you know there's also a lot of fear that goes on when this particular illustration maybe with just this particular illustration not so much as all the other um other illustrations i've done where i started out with shapes and did not start out with a line sketch for this particular one somehow i was immensely hesitant and fearful there's this kind of brain thing that happens with me sometimes when I'm going through an illustration and I'm super indecisive and I could not figure out like what's going on with the piece and I could not figure out what's going on and it's just it just feels like fear you know where it's just like I don't know what's gonna happen kind of deal and it's always kind of fun because honestly it's very very experimental like I said you know it's one of those things where like I'm just gonna do something and see how it works out um, the great example of that is the streaks of light on top of the whale's uh, skin like I mentioned early before the caustic effect you know when I was doing my research and saw that there's a caustic effect that happens when the whale gets really clo close to the surface of the ocean I was like well do I want to draw that detail in or leave it out kind of deal you know um, but in the end, I just went ahead and executed it. And it was just like, <laughs> I haven't done this before. So it's just one of those things that, you know, when you're drawing something and you're just so not used to doing it before that it just feels kind of scary <laughs> executing it just because you just don't know how it's going to work out. Uh, for this particular one, it worked out fairly decently. It's not so bad. Um, it could have been better honestly but given the fact that I'm kind of new to doing underwater scenes and drawing illustrations of underwater scenes I think I can be forgiven for not being too sure about my stats for this particular <laughs> illustration so yeah but uh, a lot of the things that I noticed too that I just thought was just really cool was um, well, things that I just re-notice again now that I'm re-watching the video. Uh, my decision to leave that left fin, the whale's left fin, or slash left broccoli fin, because this kind of looks more like broccoli, really. Um, me having uh, subconsciously decided to leave it as fuzzy as it is right now to kind of give off, again, that whole atmospheric effect, I thought that was very cool it's obviously more detailed than the back uh part of the whale that's the reason why when i initially looked at the photo again i looked at it and i was like oh yeah the left fin's detailed but then now that i'm watching the video i'm like oh wow it's not quite as detailed as the right fin on the right fin you could actually see me try to draw out like the leaf part um and again, this is the part where I deviated very, very severely. Broccoli does not look like that. <laughs> that, that is very leafy for for the whale's fins. Broccoli kind of looks more rounded, basically. But I don't know why I decided to do leafy. I just went with the flow in my head. And it just, I mean, it worked for me. So I just went ahead and went with it. But 
I thought that was cool because I, you know, started detailing all those things out versus not doing the left fin, you know. I, I basically had to look up the photo while I'm watching this video right now just to like kind of see, wait, did I detail the left fin or not? Because I couldn't remember. I had to take a look at the photo again. And then I look at the photo and I was like, wow, I left it very loose. So I thought that was a really good decision on my part, especially for me being super hesitant about this piece like i was so sure at the very beginning but then i got super hesitant and you guys kind of noticed that too uh halfway through the video like around the 15 minute to 17 minute mark there literally was like a minute a minute and a half where the video didn't do anything and that was just me just staring at a photo looking at my google reference images and just figuring out like what to do next like i just could not figure out what to do next i was just so scared about detailing this piece and i don't know why and i think um not having that line sketch might have been the cause of it even though i really don't think so simply because again like i mentioned i've done illustrations where i start out with blocks of shapes and not have any kind of outline at all and done superb, done fine, you know, like I wasn't scared at all, you know, I went gung-ho and executed something that was really cool. But for this particular one, I was just super hesitant. And I think part of the reason why I was super hesitant is because I'm creating an animal that's just completely fiction. Um, there's no such thing as a broccoli whale, you know. Uh, so if this was me, say, drawing like... Um, a person, for example, well, okay, well, now that I'm about to draw this person, I think this is a very, very good point right here. Um, I'm obviously looking at some reference for the person, but I, I was, when I was doing all the shape studies, or when I'm doing all the shapes, um, I'm basically just coming up and experimenting with stuff. And a lot of this stuff was so easy for me to come up with simply because. Well, I've done humans before, you know. So the first shape I did was a person swimming, um, following the whale. Well, this one's kind of like meeting the whale in a way. And then the one that I eventually ended up with is obviously way, way different than this shape that I made. And wow, I really like that hand. <laughs> that was really cool that I created the shape on that. That was, that was very, very cool. But yeah, my whole point is that doing something that I'm used to doing uh, is so much easier, like doing humans. I, I'm used to that. Broccoli whale, obviously there's no such thing as a broccoli whale, so I think uh, that's part of the reason why I was very, very super hesitant about creating this piece, just because I, I just didn't know how it was going to look, and I didn't know how it was going to turn out kind of deal, you know. Uh, but it turned out great, and I'm happy with the results, so yeah. But anyways, this piece is almost over. I'm just obviously just drawing a human out. Um, so that's, this was obviously the first pose that I went through, or not the first pose, the second pose. And honestly, the, the arms I really love, but I thought that the feet was very, very awkward. So in the end, I switched out the feet to have one of the feet be the same. And I think it was the feet, her... Uh, the image is flipped right now, so I can't figure out which one of her leg. I think if I'm not wrong, that's the left leg. I straightened out her left leg eventually. Just because that her pose right now is super awkward. But yeah, I eventually ended up switching it out. But yeah, this piece is almost done. Uh, I'm really happy with how this thing came out. It was very simple. It was very loose. It was done in two hours. So I knew that I wanted to speed paint more than anything else. And so um, I love how I was able to execute it in the time that I had in my mind. Some, some of my speed paints sometimes take forever. Like I always try to aim for two to three hours. <laughs> I almost always go over that. You know, so it, sometimes it gets super frustrating when it goes over that. Um, but it's really cool if I nail the time, you know, and I'm in love with what I did. I, I think those two combos are very, very cool. If I aim to do a speed paint for a two, 
around two, if I aim to do a speed paint in around two hours and it comes out beautiful, I am super happy. And this is one of those where even though I was super hesitant and super scared when it first started out, it just, it all turned out great in the end. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. So I was very happy with the way it worked out. So yeah. But yeah, just adding those final touches to this human, just making her glow. She's not so obvious in the illustration, honestly, since she's so small, but it's still a nice touch to put her there. So yeah. Oh, there it is. It's looking so good. I'm really happy with that. Yep, there it is. Thank you guys for watching this video with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night.